Okay, good morning, everyone. We've got a few people trickling through the, the door already. Welcome to another installment of the Assistive Technology Social Hub. So the, you've got myself and Stuart here, as, uh, as usual. And we've got our special guest as well, Brian Harkin, who I will introduce to you all in a few minutes time. Lots of familiar names showing up here. Welcome back, those that those regular attendees. Anybody that's new, also welcome. It's really good to have you all here again. Excellent. So we've got uh, 22 in the room at the moment. So we'll uh, give it a few more minutes as we've, we've had a hundred people register for this session. So hopefully most of those will be able to join us. Morning, Chris, one of our very regular attendees. Welcome back. So I'll mention this again in a few minutes time, but um, while you're all here and nice and early, um, as always, please do use the facilities uh, within within the webinar. Um, there we have the, the chat box, um, which you can which you can leave any you know, observations, comments. Um, and please do, um, yeah, please do feel free to use that. That's Alton H. Um, if you want to use the, the keyboard shortcut for the chat box. We also have a Q&A box as well. Um, if you want to leave sort of more substantial questions, um, then yes, please feel free to, to use the Q&A box. Um, you also have the uh, ability as well to raise your hand um, if you want to um, ask a question. And if you want to be unmuted, um, then we will. There will be an appropriate uh, time uh, at the end of, of Brian's presentation to ask um, any questions um, if you want to to voice them. Um, good, good, good. To raise your hand, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. To raise your hand, it's Alt Y on the Mac. Uh, sorry, on Windows, it's Alt Y, and on the Mac, it's Command Y. If I've got that correct as well, Sam, just chipping Thanks. in there. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you. Keeping me in check. Great. Okay, so we've got lots more people trickling through. Morning, everyone who've just joined us. Just going to take a, a minute or two. We just hit 10 o'clock, but I um, just want to make sure that, that uh, we get as many in before we, before we begin. So as I was just saying, um, welcome to another session of the Social Hub. My name's Sam from Sight and Sound Technology. We've got Stuart here from Seascape, Society for the Blind up in Fife. And we've got our special guest, Brian Hartgen from Hartgen Consultancy, who will be leading the presentation for us today. Um, I've just been uh, filling everybody in about the uh, facilities in, in the webinar that we can use today. We've got the chat box there, we've got Q&A, box for you to ask any questions or leave any observations or comments and um, all are welcome um, as we always say with these sessions it's an opportunity for you to have your say and to to um, yeah to have an open discussion very good one thing I will say about today's session obviously because we're very um, sort of privileged to have uh, Brian with us he's a very busy man so um, um, yeah the the session will the the hour will be um, will be taken up um, by obviously Brian's presentation and um, questions relating to um, the the products that, that that Brian will be demonstrating. Um, obviously, if you have any other questions, queries, concerns about other pieces of assistive technology that you're using, um, then either myself or Stuart Beveridge will get in touch after the session. Um, good. 
Okay then, so I make that 10.02 and uh, if everybody's happy, we will begin. Great. So once again, welcome everyone to another installment of the Assistive Technology Social Hub. My name's Sam and I'm um, one of the territory managers um, at Sight and Sound Technology. I look after the north of England and Scotland and uh, hence our partnership with Seascape. Um, and I'll let Stuart introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Stuart Beveridge. I work as the assistive technology trainer for um, the charity in Fife, as Sam mentioned, called Seascape. Um, if anybody um, knows Fife, they, they might know us as Fife Society for the Blind, that's what we were in the past. So my, my daily job really deals with um, a lot of um, screen reader related issues, such as, as JAWS screen reader technology, but I can also do um, more mainstream technology, such as the iPhone, Amazon Echo, etc. Um, it's a very mixed bag, so um, that's, that's my role at Seascape. Thanks, Stuart. Great, and uh, now it's, it's a real pleasure for me to uh, to introduce uh, Brian to you all. We're very fortunate to have Brian with us today. Um, I know that he's he's in demand, um, and uh, yeah, he's kindly agreed uh, to to come and join us for for his second session actually with Sight and Sound. He he was involved uh, with uh, another session, a Wednesday webinar uh, with with Sight and Sound Stuart Lawler um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he's kindly agreed to come back. Um, for those of you who don't um, maybe don't know about Brian or, or, or about his uh, his work, um, so Brian has 24 years, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brian. Experience uh, training visually impaired people how to use assistive technology, um, and this ranges from uh, Braille-based hardware through to screen reading software, um, and this is delivered within education. Um, companies, rehabilitation organisations and individuals in their own homes. Um, for the past 18 years, Brian has focused his attention on improving the access people receive to applications using JAWS, the screen reading software from Freedom Scientific. Um, and Brian also holds certificates in JAWS product knowledge and the advanced JAWS scripting course. And prior to lockdown, Brian, he was still training clients at home or places of employment, including individuals with a very severe degree of physical and sensory impairment. And Harkin Consultancy, Brian's, Brian's company, also develop a range of other products to support both JAWS and Zoom text and offer online and on-site training services. So that's a brief introduction about Brian and his work, um, but I will let Brian now take over and, uh, and uh, yeah, and give us his demonstration. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for that very warm welcome, Sam. I really do appreciate that. Uh, as Sam and Stuart have said, I'm Brian from Hartron Consultancy. I hope that you can all hear me clearly this morning, and I'm very much looking forward to delivering the presentation to you today. What I'm going to do is to present for you for about 30 minutes or so. We'll see how that runs. Um, and then we will break to see if there are any questions. We'll then move on. We're a small company based in South Wales in the UK. My wife and I own the company, Harch and Consultancy, and we've been in existence now for close to six years. Now, don't worry if you can't spell the word Hartchen. If you're Googling us, I will give you our contact details a bit later on. But put simply, we develop computer software products and services to support the JAWS for Windows screen reader or ZoomText Fusion screen reader magnifier. Now, let me make that clear from the outset. We don't support any other screen reading or magnification package. Now, while we are a small company, we're very glad to say that we have many thousands of people using our products and services worldwide. In addition to producing uh, products, we also train people in the use of JAWS itself, either remotely or when lockdown is out of the way, on site at homes of individuals or within education and employment. 
We're also every week asked to carry out JAWS script writing, which means that applications are made accessible. Again, that can be for individuals, but usually it is for organizations and companies worldwide. You'll also find some of my scripting work in JAWS itself now, if you have a copy of it. But I was asked specifically in this session to talk about voice recognition technology. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. In other words, um, being able to talk to the computer using the human voice and being able to operate it successfully as a blind person or someone who has limited vision. Now, to give you some background, a little bit of a history lesson, if you like, I've been working within the access technology arena now for about 25 years. And I started out working in a rehabilitation center for the visually impaired. And what struck me was that there were people who either couldn't type on the keyboard particularly well, or who had disabilities above and beyond visual impairment, which prevented them from using the keyboard. This whole issue of voice recognition fascinated me. And in 2001, I heard an article on an audio cassette magazine at the time. It was called Sound Computing. And it was demonstrating a product called Jawbone. Now, this linked together Jaws for Windows and Dragon Naturally Speaking, which is the voice input tool. And that's the part which accepts what you say and either transcribes your spoken output as text or it carries out a computer command. Now this seemed to me to be very good, but it did have some limitations. So in 2003, as a JAWS script writer, I was asked by a company who are no longer in operation, um, if I could develop something not identical to Jawbone, but similar. And I've been involved with this whole area of voice recognition technology since then. Now, as I say, it is by no means everything that we do due to the small level of people who need or want this technology. Uh, we couldn't live on just that. But nevertheless, we are, I would suggest, still the only major player in this field. I've seen products which have attempted to compete with what we do or do something similar. And where are they now? They've all gone or they're very out of date. So where does that leave us? What do we have to offer? Well, first of all, let's dispense with Windows speech recognition. There is an element of voice recognition built into Windows itself and also Office applications as well to some extent. In fact, this started to occur years ago with Windows Vista, if anyone remembers that operating system. And I did develop a product called JVist, which attempted to provide interaction between JAWS and that system. However, the problem is that the speech recognition accuracy is not by any means as good as the product which I've always favored and that is Dragon Naturally Speaking. So the end result of all of that is that people will tell you or tell us that the recognition is not good enough. And they think that that is a deficit of our product. They cannot differentiate understandably between what the voice input tool is doing and what we're making accessible. So the very best thing to do to overcome any of that is to use the best that we can work with. And that, as I say, is Dragon Naturally Speaking. And currently, we're up to version 15.3 of that. So we have two products which hopefully serve both ends of the market. One product which we're very well known for is called JSay. That is J for Juliet, hyphen S-A-Y, Sierra Alpha Yankee. And this allows a blind person to completely control the computer using their voice. You may already be using screen reading technology and JAWS in particular. 
and you may be able to navigate around the computer fairly well and get the most from everything that is uh, it, it offers, including the use of the internet, of course, which is, for blind people, a very liberating experience. But what about people who, for whatever reason, can't do that? Maybe they have no arms or hands. Maybe they can't even get out of bed at all due to the physical disabilities that they have. Perhaps they have a learning disability, which stops them from remembering what the different keystrokes are, which are needed. And for some of them, you need to have at least four or five hands and stand on your head, don't you? <laughs> Or what about people who just cannot type particularly well at all? Those people are our focus for JC. They shouldn't be disadvantaged just because they can't do those things. They should be able to use the computer as well. Okay, it's now JC in its 17th year, I'm glad to say, and it's a very popular product. Now, essentially, it combines the power of everything that is in JAWS for Windows or Zoom Text Fusion, which, of course, reads the screen out loud, or it displays it in a magnified or enhanced form, together with the power of the product by nuance, Dragon Naturally Speaking, and that hears what you say. So with that combination, it gives a person the ability to completely control the computer using the human voice alone. So as a very basic example, and you'll get to hear this in action shortly, you may know that in JAWS, if you want to hear the current line, you would press insert up arrow. There's nothing, there's no logic to that keystroke, except for the fact that that was the keystroke that Vispero or Freedom Scientific, as they used to be, happened to choose for it. There's no mnemonic, nothing easy to remember. But with JSAY, you would just say, speak line. And that would uh, read the current line in the document. Um, if you wanted to hear the entire document, you would say, speak document. If you want the speech to um, stop talking, uh, in other words, equating to the use of the control key, you would say, be quiet. So what I've tried to do over the years is to adopt what I call a natural language approach to this. So you actually say what you would like to happen. There is a certain amount of flexibility with this. So um, with uh, the Zoom text component, for example, you can say things like make the text bigger, um, but you can also say um, uh, increase magnification. So you see that there's a little bit of flexibility. Now, obviously, you can dictate, you can take, uh, dictate text and you can also um, do, uh, do that and JAWS will echo back the text as um, when you dictate it, you're going to hear that in a moment. But we've also developed other facilities in the product which blind people who are voice recognition users uh, can actually use and, and they have suggested them over the years. I'm thinking particularly, for example, of uh, utilities such as the ability to be able to launch specific documents, files, and folders just by speaking a voice command. And if I get time, I actually want to uh, demonstrate one of those. So let's talk about the learning and support of this kind of product, because I think that's important to emphasize. Um, and I want to talk about it in this part of the presentation, because I think what I'm about to say relates to why perhaps not many other companies have developed similar products in the past, because what they want to do really is just get the product out there and provide a limited amount of support. This product takes an enormous amount of support. People who use it invariably are physically disabled, as I've said, as well as being visually impaired. So by definition, their needs are greater. They need help setting it up initially. Uh, they need a, quite a bit of a training to get them started, uh, to get them to the point where they can comfortably use it. And as a trainer, you need a good deal of patience and understanding, as does the person using it. 
you'll hear in a moment that when I speak a command, it takes about a second or two for Dragon to investigate in its library to see if there is an appropriate match and then do something with it. So it isn't as fast as using the keyboard. I don't want to devalue the usefulness of this product, but I have to be honest with you and say that the customer needs to have a very clear expectation that this isn't going to happen overnight. It isn't Star Trek, okay? It will take weeks and months of learning and practice in order for this to really work effectively. Now, having said that, we have a lot of customers who have written dramas for television using this software. Uh, they have had books published or they just use it for everyday tasks, everyday activities, such as working with documents, email and the internet. You can do pretty much everything with your voice if you have the knowledge and if you're willing to uh, put the effort into it. Most of our customers for this software are in America, Canada and Australia. In Britain, historically, we have adopted a certain resistance to voice recognition software. And that is unfortunate. I always hope it will change, but it certainly hasn't in 17 years. But the people in those other countries have embraced it. And uh, rehabilitation workers, particularly in the States, are very, very keen on it. Um, Americans are particularly keen to support their veterans. And we have a lot of people who have lost their vision as a result of, uh, of, of wars and other such incidents, and they um, use it a lot out there. So that is JC, and I'm going to demonstrate that in just a, a minute or two. The other product that we have is called JDictate. Now, this is a much more low-cost product and is designed for people who are quite content to navigate around Windows and edit text with the keyboard, but who want a way of being able to dictate text into the computer. So people who create reports, for example, we have a lot of lawyers, solicitors who use this product, uh, social workers, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, anyone who feels it would be faster to use the voice to dictate notes, but who are content to navigate around windows using the keyboard or the mouse. Now this uses JAWS or Fusion, and you can get away with using a less expensive version of Dragon, although we don't recommend it. Um, it is very watered down and the interface is by no means as good as the product which we favor. And that is Dragon, naturally speaking, professional individual. So just to give you a little bit on price, um, assuming that you have JAWS and Fu or Fusion, uh, the other two products that you need are things like uh, you need Dragon, of course. Um, Dragon Professional Individual is half the price that it used to be. Uh, and that is two nine five. And if you buy it from us, we actually supply a noise cancelling headset microphone. And that's important when you're using voice recognition because it means that it only accepts uh, what you say. If there's any extraneous noise, um, it shouldn't pick that up. A lot of our customers work in or worked in open plan office environments. So you can appreciate uh, how important that is. Uh, JC itself costs £400, and with it you get a raft of support materials. Uh, you get them in Microsoft Word format. Um, the documents, there's about uh, 40 or 50 of them, they are broken down into small manageable chapters so that you can work through them systematically if that's what you want to do. Okay, so you get all of that as part of the product. J Dictate, you know the price of Dragon already. Uh, if you did want the less expensive version, it comes out at about 135, but you actually don't get a noise cancelling headset there. Um, the J Dictate product at the moment is £60. So there is a very marked difference in price, isn't there? But there is a marked difference in the functionality as well. 
Before I get into some demos, let me talk a little about what you actually need in order to get all this to work. The first is the computer specification. Most modern Windows computers these days can accommodate this, but really you need four gig of RAM or greater. More is always better of, of anything. <laughs> and that is true in the case of RAM. So at least four gig of RAM would be good. Uh, you'll appreciate that the uh, more RAM you've got, the faster this is all going to be and the less frustrating it is going to be for the user. Okay, so that's um, that. You also need uh, a noise cancelling headset microphone, um, which I mentioned earlier on, that produces the greatest level of voice recognition accuracy. I've worked with a lot of people, as I've intimated, who really are severely physically impaired. And in those situations where they cannot put a headset on their head at all, um, I have used um, uh, as, as close as possible to a noise cancelling solution. It is actually a microphone that can be clamped to a table or can just sit on a stand by the wheelchair, that kind of thing. But it does take uh, a good deal of uh, on-site work, I would suggest, in order to get that kind of solution to work. Okay, so we have that. Uh, you need uh, JAWS for Windows version 18 onwards. So that takes care of the last five years, I think, worth of JAWS updates. The latest is 2020, um, or alternatively, you can have Zoom Text Fusion. Uh, what else have I got here? Office 2016, 2019, or 365 are ideal for this, although it will work with some other solutions as well. So let me just uh, quickly demonstrate a few things and then we'll break for questions because I've talked for quite a while and you might have some questions at this point um, and then we'll get into a bit more. Now what I'm about to do um, is quite challenging for the computer which I am using because what I've got to do is to try and bring you the audio from JAWS and I've got to speak into Dragon using a noise cancelling headset microphone and I need to make this all good quality for you. So please be a little bit forgiving if it doesn't quite work as we think it should. Um, I think it will. I have done some testing and I think we'll be all right. Can I please ask you as well, at this point, while I am doing the demo, can you not use or type anything into the chat box? Okay, because that appears to be upsetting things just slightly. So just hold off and then you could ask all the questions you like in, in just a few minutes once I've done a demo or two. So I've got uh, rigged up here a bit of um, a Heath Robinson uh, affair, which I'm hoping that you will uh, uh, is going to work out. So I'm just starting my Dragon now. Now, a person can elect to have Dragon start automatically, um, which is obviously very good. And when the uh, Dragon software loads, it says the computer is ready for you to talk to it, which it has now done. You didn't hear that. I had it turned off, um, but it does actually say that. Okay, so the microphone can be in any one of two conditions. It can be awake or asleep. Now, at the moment, it is asleep. So it isn't in the main listening to what I'm saying, but it is listening for certain key phrases. It's a bit, a, a bit like the A-Lady, the Amazon Echo. Um, so when you speak a key word or a key phrase, uh, such as check microphone, because as blind people, we need to know that the microphone is awake or asleep, we can't look at it, it's going to come back with a response. The command to awaken the microphone is microphone on, and to put it to sleep, to anesthetize it, if you like, is microphone off. Okay, so I'm going to um, just uh, deal with this now. Just bear with me one second while I get this organized.
Okay, so I am now back with you and hopefully uh, you can still hear me and I should be able to communicate with Dragon. So let me check this. Check microphone. Microphone sleeping. Okay, so you should have heard it there say microphone sleeping. We'll just turn the volume down an inch. Okay, and that should be fine from here on in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to awaken the microphone and I'm going to start the Microsoft Word application. Microphone on. Start Word. Start in Word, please wait. Document one word, edit. Today is Thursday, full stop. Today is Thursday, full stop. This morning, comma. This morning, comma. I went for a walk in the park, full stop. I went for a walk in the park, full stop. The sun was shining, comma. The sun was shining, comma. The birds were singing. The birds were singing. And I had a spring in my step, exclamation mark, new paragraph. And I had a spring in my step, exclamation mark, new paragraph. When I reached home, comma. When I reached home, comma, I wrote to my friend Mary, full stop. I wrote to my friend Mary, full stop. I wanted to tell her. I wanted to tell her. About all the exciting places. About all the exciting places. I had recently visited, exclamation mark. I had recently visited, exclamation mark. Microphone off. Okay, so you hear, heard uh, two completely different sounds there for when the microphone was uh, awoken and when it was put to sleep. Now you'll notice the way that I was dictating my text. I was doing it in a very structured way. A lot of people like to just babble and gaggle at it. Um, that is not the way to do it. We can't have From Sam calls inside and sound a, a complete conversation with this. Uh, Sam was... Uh, uh, um, a little bit naughty just then. He did exactly what I asked him not to do, uh, which was to um, use the chat box just while I'm demonstrating. Okay, but um, anyway, we'll forgive him for that. So uh, basically, uh, what um, I was doing there was to um, speak about four or five words at a time, and then I was listening back to what was being spoken. In other words, what the transcribed text is. And assuming I was satisfied with it, then I proceeded on to the next chunk of text. And I was breaking my sentence up into logical chunks. So for example, I dictated up to the comma, or I dictated up to the full stop or the period if you are in the United States and you're listening to this. Okay, so let's do a little bit of navigation and then we will break for questions and then I'll do a little bit more for you. So this time, what I'm going to do is move through that text and uh, listen to see what it was like. Microphone on. Go to top. Top of file. Speak line. Today is Thursday. This morning I went for a walk in the park. The sun was shining. The birds were. Next line. Singing and I had a spring in my step. Next line. Blank. Next line. When I reached home, I wrote to my friend Mary. I wanted to tell her about all the exciting places I. Next word. I. Next word. Reached. Spell word. R E A C H E D space. Go to top. Top of file. Speak document. Today is Thursday. This morning I went Be for quiet. a walk in the park. The sun was shining. The... Select Mary. Selected Mary. Elizabeth. Selected space Elizabeth. Speak sentence. When I reached home, I wrote to my friend Elizabeth. Microphone off. Okay, so I did a number of things there. I navigated the document a little bit. I also um, uh, got it to spell a word. I decided to change Mary to Elizabeth. So I said select, followed by the word that I wanted to change, which was Mary. And then um, I uh, said Elizabeth, because of course, once you've selected text, as you'll know with the keyboard, then uh, the text is vulnerable. 
So that is the case here. You can just dictate right over the top of it. There are lots of easier ways which have been developed for blind people using this software in order to select much longer passages of text, because that's all okay if you just want to do that with an individual word to say select followed by a word that happens to be in the document. But if you don't know what's in the document because you can't see it, or you need to select something longer, then uh, of course um, that uh, has other implications. So um, we have different methods of um, uh, dealing with that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, um, let's see what the time is. Yes, I'm pretty much uh, smack on. I've spoken for exactly 30 minutes. So uh, if anyone has any questions, um, please do ask them now. I will uh, be quiet and let Sam uh, take over. Um, and then I will come back and do some other demos if uh, anyone would like me to. Right, thank you, Brian. Apologies for my uh, for breaking the rules. I uh, assumed because um, you, you were having a mini pause from the demo that I could sneak a quick comment in there and let uh, the attendees know what was going on. But I, apo I apologize for that. Um, great, thank you so much for that uh, so far. Um, so much, um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant um, content there for us all to, to take in. We've got um, a few questions queued up. We've got a few people with raised hands. Um, Firstly, I've got a couple of questions um, that were sent to me before the session, actually, um, by Raymond, Raymond Smart. Um, and some of these you've you've sort of already answered, um, but I'll I'll read them through anyway, Brian, just for you to 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 re um, re look at. Brian, um, Raymond's first question is: How much hard drive space is needed um, to use the software? Okay, um, not too much actually in the way of um, uh, installing uh, Dragon itself, um, because uh, as I said, most modern computers can can easily deal with it these days. What does grow is the voice profile. Okay, because as and uh, as you're learning how to use the software, it's learning from you. It's a two-way educational process. Um, so the more it learns from you, the more data it needs to store. But even a, a good voice profile is not going to occupy more than, say, I don't know, uh, 400, uh, uh, 500 megabytes, something like that. It's actually, um, it's actually quite uh, low in capacity these days. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Raymond's also asked, how many computers um, is it possible to install the software with a single user license? Um, really, usually it's, it's three, mm -hmm. um, but the answer is as many as your copy of JAWS and Fusion are installed onto with the same serial number. So if you have three or four computers, for example, with the same uh, serial number on with JAWS or Fusion, then you can certainly install our software onto the same um, set of computers. Excellent. Um, we've also got a question here. Um, do, uh, would, would the user need to pay extra for a server version of all three pieces of software? We do not support using it on a server. It just isn't as responsive as it should be. Um, as, as you've already heard, there is a little delay in, in things uh, being actioned. And no, we're, we're not going to support that. So uh, all the products um, need to be installed locally on the PC. Uh, what I should say as well, just to quantify that a little bit, uh, Sam, um, yeah. obviously with um, uh, people using this in uh, organizations and companies where uh, there are a lot of administrator requirements um, uh, that are needed or it's non-standard software. Uh, we're very used to working with IT departments uh, within such organizations uh, so that we can give them the right advice in order to make sure not only that the products are installed correctly, but that the uh, individual users have the necessary permissions on their account for all this to fit together. Okay, great. Thank you for 
that, Brian. Um, another question here we've got, um, what's the oldest version of Windows um, that all of the software will run on efficiently? Windows 7. Great, nice and concise, that one. Um, and is there a, a period of, 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 of time where the, the user will receive free software updates after purchase? Yes, actually. Um, so updates typically for JSA, because they take quite a long time to, to get together, um, there's usually two or three updates a year um, that they will actually get uh, free of charge. Most of the major upgrades come along uh, every October to coincide with the release of the next version of JAWS and uh, Fusion. And thereafter, we usually have uh, one or two updates um, as the year progresses, just to see how things really uh, pan out. But that's about it. We do have a software maintenance agreement, um, as do Vispero and Sight and Sound for JAWS and Fusion. And they will give you, an SMA will give you the um, next uh, two major upgrades free. So, um, so if you buy um, an SMA, uh, which is at a discounted rate, then you're all set for the next couple of years. Excellent. Peter's just dropped a message into the chat box, actually, and he's asked um, about Windows 7, and he's asked um, if Windows 7 is still supported, um, which... It is. Which it is. Yeah, it is, Peter. Um, obviously, um, you know, with a, an older version of JAWS, um, you will start to encounter issues. Um, but, the, but yeah, Windows 7 is, is still supported. Um, Good. Uh, another question here, we've got how much training is available to a total beginner and at what cost per hour? Well, um, <laughs> as, I, as I said, you actually get um, some very comprehensive documents with it anyway. So if you're into self-learning, then there is no additional cost. You can, uh, you can uh, read through those documents. Um, we can provide um, a DAISY book, a text-only DAISY book um, of the documents, if that is a requirement. We can't provide it with um, uh, synthesized speech in audio due to legal restrictions, okay? But we can do it in text-only DAISY. So if you have a device like a Victor Reader Stream, or one of the Plex Talk products that Sight and Sound could sell you, then you could certainly put the Daisy book on there. We do have, at an additional cost, um, a, a service which we call J Say It. And what this is, is a series of audio lessons uh, which um, are being developed uh, when time allows. So usually uh, there is a lesson that comes along every two or three weeks. I think we're up to lesson 17 at the moment. We started it this year. And each one um, deals with a specific topic. Now, these are audio MP3 files. Uh, the cost for that is £200. And that is not ongoing. Um, uh, product. Once you've paid uh, your £200, you're going to get all the lessons as and when they come along. Don't know how many there will be. I suspect probably about 30, 35, something like that. But we're already up to about um, 12 hours or uh, thereabouts of audio. So it's quite substantial what you're getting for your money. If you want a uh, personal one-to-one -one training, uh, that can be done. Um, a lot of people use access to work for that. And we can discuss how much training you need on an individual basis. A lot of people break it down into half days because it's just too much to remember. So a half day is about three hours. So I would suggest getting in touch with us if that was uh, a requirement there. Excellent. Thank you, Brian, for that. And thank you, Raymond, for all of those questions. Um, yeah, really, really useful to, uh, to get all that information. Now we've got Patsy as well, who's asked, uh, morning Patsy, regular attendee. Um, can JC and JDictate be installed on her Lenovo PC, which does not have JAWS or Zoom text? Um, the PC does have a built-in magnifier and narrator. The answer is no. No, we are a company exclusively dealing with JAWS and Zoom Text Fusion. Yeah, yeah, thank you, 
Brian and Patsy, if you want to discuss um, that, that after the session, obviously we can we can chat about um, possibly Zoom text in in your case. Um, yeah, that is something we can we can discuss. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, now we do have a few raised hands, uh, Brian. But if, if would you prefer to to, to no, talk? by all means, let in the, in the words of Paul McCartney and Wings, let them in. Excellent. Okay, great, great. So uh, first of all, we've got Peter, um, who I'm happy to unmute now, Peter, and you can ask your question. So uh, feel free, Peter. You'll just need to mute yourself. Um, if right. you still want to. There you go. Hi, Peter. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you fine. My question was, why does it have to speak so fast? Is that adjustable? Of course. Um, if I didn't have it speaking so fast, we wouldn't get through everything, unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> but, but yes, of course. And what you would do, um, uh, in fact, I slowed it down from my original rate. Um, <laughs> okay. So um, what you would do is you would say, uh, um, speak slower and speak faster to adjust the rate. I see. Thank you. One other small thing, many, many moons ago, my wife got me a system called Via Voice and I nearly lost the rag with it because it had the typical old BBC voice and it couldn't understand my voice. Well, you've got a very good voice. I would easily, take, I would easily take you on to, uh, to train. Um, so, um, yes, voice recognition has improved over the years. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I would suggest it's also about um, adopting a good uh, dictation technique, as I was doing, and uh, receiving lots of good training so that you can really get the most out of a product like this. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Thank, thanks, Peter. Okay, good. And uh, we've also got, um, before I come to you, Michael, I'll unmute you in a second. Uh, Andrew Coleman from Galloway's Society for the Blind. Morning, Andrew. Another, another regular. Uh, Andrew's asked um, specifically to you, Brian, do, do, you, um, do you work uh, with local blind organisations? And also, how can people try this product to know that it is the right option for them? This is a hard one. Yes, we'll work with anybody, of course. Um, but actually, um, if we were to start giving demonstrations away of, um, of this product to uh, organizations on a voluntary basis, it's not just about giving the, the technology or donating it. We, we would need to invest time and an effort into training those organizations in order that they can they can do it it's not just a case of giving you a product and say okay there you are get on with it um, because you might not be demonstrating it to its best advantage to uh, potential uh, people who are interested so uh, we i mean we are um, as i said we've got a lot of customers but we're a tiny company our resources are limited so what we do have on the website, um, which is, by the way, hartgenconsultancy.com, H-A-R-T-G-E-N, consultancy.com, we do have a series of audio presentations on the JSA page, which very clearly demonstrate the kind of thing that it can do. Uh, again, I come back to people in America. We have a lot of rehab workers, a lot of them, who do recommend JSA, and they uh, don't expect to us to give them or to donate the product. Okay, they're quite willing to buy it because they understand the true value of this, and they're willing to uh, take it on board, get to learn it themselves, and uh, uh, eventually they actually end up selling it. We have a lot of American distributors, so that's as far as I can go with that one. That's really helpful. Thank you. Brian, um, good. And now, Michael, if you'd still like to, to ask your question, I'll unmute you now. Uh, if it allows me to do this. Yep, there you go, Michael. You're uh... Right, thank you very much, Sam. Can right, I? Morning. Um, morning. 
can I say one thing about using the webinar? I don't seem to be able to use the chats. So I was completely perplexed how to get in there. So that's maybe something you can address outside of this meeting uh, for yeah. future references. I do struggle to get into the chat box. Mm -hmm. And the question for Brian, if I may. Um, Brian, good morning. Um, I was wondering, you haven't covered it in your particular presentation, but can Jay say when you're on the internet, go from link to link? Yes, I would like to demonstrate that in just a moment, actually, if that's all right. Yes, thank you very much. I'd be interested to hear that. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank, no, thank you, Michael. And yes, we will um, yeah, endeavour to, to address that um, the issue with the chat box there. Um, but thank you for raising that, Michael. Uh, Great. Okay. Um, so I think, um, Brian, we're, we're, we're good to go if you want to uh, carry on with your presentation. Thank you very much. We're good to go. Okay, so for, for the next few minutes, I won't uh, spend a lot of time on it, but uh, what I will do is I will do a little bit more in the way of a demonstration here. And um, we just had a question there about using the internet, and that was fairly fortuitous. It was a great question, because that's what a lot of people want to do. So I thought it would be a good idea just to demonstrate a little bit about how you would navigate uh, websites. Now, with every... Um, uh, JAWS command that there is, and there are hundreds of them, aren't there, in order to navigate all kinds of different environments, including the internet, we have a voice-based equivalent for it. Okay, so uh, you will hear me, for example, navigating by heading, and you'll hear me uh, bringing up the list of links. These are all things that you might be familiar with. Now, I did allude to the fact earlier on that you can actually set up shortcuts where you can launch a particular folder, file, or website by voice. And I'm going to use one of those now. If you can't remember what it is that you've set up, by the way, you can bring up a list of them. So that is uh, fortunate, isn't it? Um, but I, this morning, when I installed this software to do this demonstration, um, I set up a shortcut to the Sight and Sound Technology website, because I thought that would be a good one to use. And we can see how we might use this with uh, the JSA software. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go back to uh, uh, using the computer by voice. If I could ask you again, please, just for the moment, to hold still on the chat or anything else while this goes ahead, and uh, then we'll see what we can do. Now, if you recall, I was in Microsoft Word at this point, I'm just going to get back there. Okay, so the first thing I perhaps need to do is to close this down. I don't need to, um, but I think it, in, in view of what else is going on, I think I will do it. Okay, a lot of the commands within JC are consistent across all applications. And that is a good thing. Yes, there are commands, of course, to interact with specific parts of those applications, but a lot of them are consistent. So for example, uh, uh, commands like speak document, speak line, uh, all those sorts of things, they are consistent whether you're um, composing an email, whether you're reading it back, whether you're on the web, whether you're in Microsoft Word, and so on. So if you've learned a small number of commands, you can pretty much get by with uh, um, using some applications. And one of those very consistent commands in order to close down any running program is close program. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the close program command, and I haven't saved this document. I could do, I would say, save file, and it would ask me what the file name was going to be, and I could dictate that. Just by way of going down a side road for a moment, you can also uh, specify, without doing a lot of complex navigation in the saving dialogue or anything like that, you could actually specify where that document gets saved to. So if you have a folder called letters, for example, you can actually uh, get it to save directly into that folder, whether that be on an external drive, on a network source or whatever, providing you've done some setup in advance, then you can do that. So uh, I'm not, I haven't saved this document, so it's going to ask me whether I want to save it or not. And I'm going to say, click don't save. Okay, so 
um, that is going to click the, de the don't save button, which happens to be on the screen at the time. And then we will get back to where we should be and I will start navigating the web. I should say as well that if you want to have several programs open at once, you can do that. You can bring up a list of them. You would say select a program. And one of the earliest things that I always train people to do uh, when they're using this software is how to navigate lists. I'm going to come back to that in a moment, actually, uh, if I remember, because there's something I want to say about lists. All right. So let me just uh, put, rearrange things here and we will uh, get on the Internet and see how it all works. Check microphone. Microphone sleeping. Microphone on. Close program. File name, file name edit. Today is Thursday. Click don't save. Participants 53, input search keyword. Go to desktop. Folder view, list view, dragon, 40 of 59. Start sight and sound. Start sight and sound. Sight and Sound Technology Home, Microsoft Edge. Sight and Sound Technology Home page has two regions, six headings and 67 links. Next heading. Featured products heading level two. Next heading. Mini Vision Mobile Phone heading level three link. Next line. Add the cart button. Next line. Excavat 299 pounds in, Excavat 358 pounds and 80 pence. Select a link. Links list dialog, links list view, Mini Vision Mobile Phone 36 of 67. Move down. Mini Vision Light Mobile Phone 37 of 67. Move down. Mini Vision Light Mobile Phone 38 of 67. Blog. Blog 56 of 67. Blog. Confirm that. Blog slash sight and sound technology Microsoft Edge. Blog slash sight and sound technology page has one frame, three regions, 104 headings and 192 links. Next heading. Blog heading level one. Next heading. Getting it ready online 2020 round of prize drawn more. Heading level two link. Confirm that. www.satansound.co.uk slash blog slash getting it ready online 2020 round of prize drawn more slash Microsoft Edge. Getting it ready online 2020 round Required. of prize drawn more slash Next heading. Getting it ready online 2020 round of prize drawn more. Heading level one. Speak document. Heading level one. Getting it ready online 2020 round of prize drawn more. For those who don't already know, the annual Getting It Ready event has been developed to provide disability professionals in further and education. Quiet. And Microphone off. So let me explain one or two of those uh, commands for you because I thought they were quite interesting, although I say it myself. So um, we said things like select a link and that was the equivalent to insert F7, brought up the list of links and I was navigating it in the way that a JC user would navigate all lists. And we have a lot of lists in the product because it makes things so much easier. So uh, those commands are move up and move down. Now, of course, there are easier ways or, or more rapid ways of getting to where you want to be, because if you were just saying move down and hearing the next link, you'd be there all night, wouldn't you, if there's a hundred odd links on the page. So you can actually uh, use commands like move down 10 or move up 20 in order to get to where you want to be. But I happened to look this morning and I saw there was a link called blog on the Sight and Sound page. So I just said the first word, in fact, the only word um, of the link that I wanted to get to. So once I was in the list of links, I can uh, do quite a bit with my voice. So I said blog and I got right there. Um, I was probably some way away from it, but it wouldn't matter. As long as it's in the list, it was okay. And then I said, confirm that. Now, that, that is a command that we use liberally. And it is almost the equivalent of pressing enter, although internally in the code, it actually does quite a bit more than that. Um, but that launches uh, things. We had the question there, how do you activate a link? Well, that is one way. Um, and we've learned how to move from one link to another through the list of links, although you can say next link and previous link things like that. And we read some of the web page as well. If we wanted to go back to the previous page, I would have said go back a page. 
and that would have done exactly that. So there are lots of tools in order to be able to navigate the web. You can dictate into forms. That's OK. You would get to where you wanted to be. If you're familiar with screen reading technology, um, you would say forms mode on and you would dictate whatever you want. You can say forms mode off. You can also say check forms mode if you're not sure whether it's on or off. The other thing I wanted to say about lists was that um, a lot of people, as I say, in America, they really um, appreciate teaching blind people how to navigate lists. And we did get uh, a request from uh, a rehabilitation uh, center out there. And uh, what they wanted to do was to make it easier for people to navigate the Outlook attachments list. Um, because it's not always easy, even with the keyboard, what you actually have to do, obviously, is you get into the body of the email, you press shift and tab to get into the attachments area, and you arrow left and right in the current incarnation of Office to get to where you want to be. And then you press enter, and then one of a couple of things may happen. It's all a little bit unpredictable. And also, if people paste uh, pictures or of the attachments into the body of the email, uh, they don't come up anyway. So uh, they were looking for a much more robust method of being able to make these attachments work. So what I did was I built a list of attachments. So it goes through and it presents all the attachments into uh, a vertical list. And that means that people can use the commands that uh, they're already familiar with, such as move up and move down, etc. And then they can press enter or say confirm that and the, um, the uh, individual attachment will open. Finally, I'd just like to end by, by saying this before I take any more questions. I'm very happy to take any questions. With JSA especially, we do not stop you from using the keyboard and JAWS functionality. So if for whatever reason you want to graduate to the keyboard or you want to use the keyboard for something, we're not gonna say, no, you, you've got to just use your voice. Uh, that would be just so impractical because a lot of people want to mix and match their skills that they've got. So we're not as inflexible as that. So you can use JAWS in the way that you would expect to be able to use it if that's what you want to do. Um, and uh, you can use your voice as well in order to be able to control it. So I'd like to thank you very much for inviting me along today. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure for me in talking to you and uh, presenting the software that we have. Um, of course, as I've already given, <clears throat> the website address is hartgen, H-A-R-T-G-E-N, consultancy.com. But I'm very happy to stay around for, uh, you know, quite a, quite a long time, if necessary, in order to answer any questions. And thank you to Sam and his team as well for giving me this uh, really good opportunity. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, and thank you for, again for your um, fantastic presentation. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot in there um, which 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 we can all uh, absolutely take away and, and, and learn from. Um, and it is worth noting, everyone, that this session <clears throat> is recorded um, and will be uh, posted on our YouTube channel, um, so you can come back and refer to this um, and and you know, take take. Uh, all of Brian's, uh, the information that Brian's uh, given us today um, at a later date as well. Um, we do have one question um, in the Q&A box, Brian, before we finish. Andrew from Galloway's again has, has asked, um, how do you know what options are in a menu or, um, or alert? Can you explore using your voice as you might not know what to ask if you don't know what is being displayed on the screen? Can you say things like tab or shift tab? Yes, you can. Uh, you can say uh, tab or sh and shift tab, Andrew. But we prefer that people say next control or next field 
and previous field or previous control because it sounds more natural doesn't it um anything to to demystify this is what we're about anything to take the techiness out of it to make it sound a little bit more like what you would want to happen but yes you can certainly do that you can also say things like speak dialog box which will recite all of the controls in order it's like giving you um an oral overview as, as to what's in front of you. You can say things like speak window title. If you want to know what the window title is, and obviously uh, you'll know with JAWS, that's going to give you the heading information as well if you're on a web page. So yes, there are lots of um, facilities in there um, so that you can actually uh, get an overview as to um, what's in front of you and what you can do. Brilliant. Thanks, Brian, for that. And uh, Chris, yeah, Andrew has also thanked you uh, for that answer, Brian. Um, Chris Albert, uh, hi, Chris, has asked. Um, yes, oh, uh, da, da, da. Ah, okay. So Chris has actually asked, uh, Brian, if, if we do run a session like this again, um, would it be possible to see how JSA looks if you were able to share your screen? Um, um, I don't know if that's something we can do right now, but perhaps... Um, all it would do is um, it would show you um, what I was dictating. Okay, there isn't anything special to look at. Okay, yeah. so all it's going to do is it would be like me typing the text into the document. Uh, but quite honestly, putting this as delicately as I can, I think it does you or would do you good anyway, actually, to listen um, to what's being said. Um, the best or, or good trainers are those who listen to, to what's being said so that they can um, convey to the user uh, precisely what they should be understanding and expecting. So the answer to your question is, I, I could have done that, yes, but it, it wouldn't have given you anything special to look at. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I know a couple of people, um, which is why I... Um, um, yeah, apologies again for interrupting you earlier. I was just dropping a message in the chat box because uh, a lady did ask why I was the only person that she could see. <laughs> and I'm sorry uh, to disappoint you, uh, Jane. Um, but yeah, of course, Brian's uh, demonstration um, only really required him to, to use um, audio, um, yeah. as he's just explained. Um, yes, very good. Um, good. And that looks like... Oh, Good. Jane is part of Chris's team. So Jane and Chris both asked that question. Um, yes. And um, what I'll do, guys, as always, I do follow up the session with a with a with an email to everybody that's been um, just to, to feedback. Um, but I will also pop pop your uh, the uh, website address in that email, uh, Brian. Um, and of course, if anybody has, you know, any quick quite often uh, once we've gone away and uh, and sort of filtered through all of the information that's been given to us. Uh, lots of questions do come up post session. So um, yeah, please do either contact me or Stuart, or I'm sure Brian will be happy to, to, to be contacted directly as well. Yes, um, the best thing to do is to drop us an email with whatever questions you've got. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that would be Brian, B-R-I-A-N, at Hartgen Consultancy, as before, H-A-R-T-G-E-N, consultancy.com. Excellent. And, um, yeah, I'm sure you'll be happy for me to add that to the, uh, the follow-up email as well, Brian. Of course. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah, good. We do actually, um, if you're happy to, we've just got a couple of raised hands. Um, if you're happy to take those questions. Of course, yes. Good. Good. We'll start with, uh, we've got Leah Campbell. I'll unmute you now, Leah. So you should be able to now. Unmute. There you go. Hi, Leah. Good morning, Brian, and good morning, all of you. Um, hello, first... hello uh, Leah. And just to explain to people that Leah is actually using voice recognition software. She is a JSA user and um she is doing extremely well and always has i don't want to embarrass her at all um but <laughs> yeah. she she does extremely well uh, she's in the united states and obviously she is using zoom 
as well. She cannot use the keyboard. So that is a little testimony to uh, how things work out. Uh, sorry about that, uh, Leah. Please ask your question. No, very welcome, Brian. I just wanted to sing your praises for developing this. I'm kind of saddened that it's not as well received in the UK because Jay Say and Jay Say It are amazing products. Um, so thank you and your wife for your company and all that you do. Um, my quick two questions are, one, did you say the learning module is available on Daisy Book Format? It could be made available, yes, if you want me to provide that to you. But just remember, as I said, it, it would be uh, um, synthesized speech. It would, you would have to have a player that is capable of reading DAISY texts. So if you have something, as I say, like a Victor Reader stream, that yes. is capable, um, and um, uh, a Plex Talk, something like that that can play those books, yes, I'm sure we can uh, deal with that for you. Yes, I've got that because that would just take out of the next paragraph and breaking up, you know, reading yes, the that's learning right. module. Yes. Um, and second, why doesn't Jay say support a sappy voice and would it ever? Jay say will work with the vocalizer voices. Uh, from Jaws, um, that's in Jaws or Fusion. The problem with those. Uh, there's nothing stopping you using them now, Leah, but they do take up more computer resources. Eloquence is by far and always has been the most responsive speech synthesizer. So my thoughts are always that we want, uh, because there's a lot going on on the computer, there's voice input and voice output and doing something with it. I always like the computer to be as responsive as it can be, so as to avoid any frustration on your part. When you start introducing some of these more human sounding voices into the mix, then it tends to become a little bit more sluggish. So by all means, play with them. If they suit you, if you have a powerful enough computer, then, um, and, and it's all working for you, tremendous. That's great. But for the ultimate responsiveness, I always suggest eloquence. And would 16 megs of RAM hopefully be powerful enough? Well, it should be. As I say, okay. you just might experience a little more of a delay uh, okay. when you're dictating things. Or in the next computer, get more RAM. Uh, well, that was one way of doing it, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you, Leah. Excellent. Thank you, Leah. Um, we've got a, American visitors as well today, which is, which is great. Um, good. And then Amy uh, Stannard, another regular uh, attendee, uh, would like to ask a question. I'll unmute you now, Amy. You should just... <clears throat> there you go. Hi, Hello. Amy. Hello. Hi. Hello, Amy. We can yeah. hear you. All right. <laughs> um, when, when you first started, you said there was two different versions. You said there was the, like the full version, then you said there was like the version of you just wanted to use it like just for dictation but then yes go back i did to it. um what's what's is there a diff is there a difference in the way you use it is it is there less commands to it or do you use it there the are, same way that there just are no, there are no commands as such um so this is about dictation only uh, just to summarize for anyone who may have missed it there is a product that Amy mentioned there called J Dictate. What I was demonstrating which was J Say, uh, which gives you complete hands-free control of the computer. Now, J Dictate is different. What it will do is it will echo back the text. You'll remember that when I was dictating text in my Word document, it was speaking it back to me phrase by phrase. Um, so that is what J Dictate does together with uh, making some aspects or quite a lot of aspects of Dragon itself more accessible from a keyboard standpoint. So what you would do in the case of J Dictate is you would get into your Microsoft Word document or any text edit area. It could be an email. It could be um, a tweet on Twitter, either via the website or using um, uh, a custom Twitter client like TW Blue 
for instance, uh, which is freely available, whatever the text area is, you would get into it. You would press a key on the keyboard and that would awaken the microphone and you would hear the musical chord sound that you heard earlier on. You would then go ahead and dictate. It would repeat back the text so you could make sure that it was correct. When you finished dictating your text, you would again press the same key on the keyboard. You would hear the closing door sound and then you would edit it or do whatever you wanted with that text or move around the application itself. Um, and so it is very, very different to how you would use JSAY. You do not even awaken or um, put to sleep the microphone with voice commands. It is completely keyboard driven. And that's the ultimate difference. And is, um, is a difference in price between the two? Oh, definitely, because there's a marked difference in the functionality. JSAY does a lot more. So just to reiterate, the uh, price for JSAY is £400 and the price for JDictate is 60, 60. Now, don't forget that you also need a copy of Dragon, naturally speaking, as well. It isn't a self-contained application, so you do need Dragon uh, in order for that to work. But those are the costs. I should say with JDictate, you also get documentation. It's much slimmer. Um, but it does uh, take you through everything that I've said. And of course, in terms of installing it, um, uh, it is all described from the perspective of a keyboard user who is visually impaired as well. So there's no reason whatsoever why a blind person couldn't install this software. And because you've got because you've got no commands, so You'll, you'll type something and use your voice. How do you get it to read back then? If you've got... You would use whatever your screen reading command... I mean, it's going to read it back automatically anyway. That is what JDictate is about. Okay, so if I said to you, uh, Dear Amy, new paragraph, it would say, Dear Amy, new paragraph. Okay, so I knew... But it still, it ha it still has that element. It still has it's, to read back. That's the point of the JDictate element, yes. It has that. What you can't do with J dictate is to use commands like speak line or speak document. You would use your conventional keystrokes in JAWS or Fusion in order to interrogate it, to read that text back, to proofread it. And I'd always recommend proofreading when you are using voice recognition. So in the case of uh, it, uh, reading the current line, for example, it will be insert up arrow, which is the standard JAWS command. Right. Thanks. Thanks for that. I wasn't sure what the difference was. Uh, I knew there must no be problem. some some difference, but I wasn't sure. A great question. Thank you for asking. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Excellent. Um, we've got a couple more, uh, Brian. If, if you're happy to take them, so we've Please got. Do. Um, yeah. Chris again has asked. Um, yeah, he's asked. So, is he correct in thinking that the the minimum that a VI a visually impaired user needs is zoom text plus dragon plus jsa zoom text fusion okay it's important to emphasize yeah. that okay <clears throat> it's not because you can buy zoom text it is not a product that works with zoom text standalone so it's either jaws or zoom text fusion but uh, apart from that yes you are correct good just to explain to everybody um so Zoom Text Fusion, for those of you who don't know, um, essentially combines the Zoom Text magnification software with the functionality of the JAWS screen reader um, in one piece of software. Um, so yes, Chris, so you would need, um, as a minimum, you'd need Zoom Text Fusion with the Dragon Naturally Speaking and JSA to pair, pair the, the two or three together. Um, great. Thank you, Chris. Um, and Paul has asked, so he has uh, two PCs. One oper operates on Windows 7, the other on Windows 10. Would he be able to use the one product on both or would he need to purchase the product twice due to having two different operating systems? No, he would be able to use the single product. Excellent. Nice and straightforward, that one. Um, 
now we have a, a couple more raised hands. Uh, Michael, again, I'll unmute you, Michael. Hi again. Thanks so much. Brian, just a very simple question. Um, you were talking about JDIC Tate, um, which I've recently purchased. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's you, is it? Right, I'm okay. Afraid, I'm afraid it is. No, that's um, lovely. That's lovely. Great. I did say I hope to meet you. Um, how is it delivered? How is the um, JDIC Tate uh, the delivered and the all JDIC, the other software? The JDIC Tate is delivered using um, uh, email. Okay, right. so we send you um, the documentation as an attachment. Yes. There's also a link uh, right. so you can download the software. Now, the Dragon is different, which is why I was uh, exchanging a lot of correspondence with you. So uh, because what we want to do is to provide you with the best level of voice recognition, we send out uh, Dragon with a USB noise cancelling headset that I mentioned earlier on. Right. And so... Uh, that will enable you, you uh, you've got a good voice, so that will enable you to get the most accurate speech yes. recognition that there is. Thank you. Okay. And then, so you just send an email. And would that also apply for the other things that I've purchased, the, um, the Zoom all, text? All of um, them. What scripts. we're actually waiting for from you, Michael, uh, just, just very, very quickly, is your JAWS serial number. I have sent it several times. You've sent it? Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, mean, we'll... I can tell you now, but I've sent it several No, don't times. tell it to us now. I okay. will have a look back and, and, and double check. We've had such a, a lot of email of course, over the last couple with of your days. your wonderful deals that you've been doing recently. <laughs> Um, I will I will be more thorough and uh, do better and check. Well, the one that I told you about the configuration has it in initially. Okay, I, I will one. sort it out. Yeah, Lovely. thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Brian. Thanks, Michael. Thank, thank you, Sam, and I appreciate the explanation of how to use the webinar at some stage as well. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, Alton H is the... Uh... Well, it didn't work for me. Yeah, that's... Um... I, I, and it said which which channel do you want to do and and i thought rather than faff around with it i want to listen to what brian has to say of rather course. than spend time on yeah. faffing around with the technology I'll, I'll be in touch uh, michael with a sort of um, yes a clear description of of of, of how yes. to and you should operate. hear from me as well by the end of the day thank yeah. you very much oh, great thank you. thank you that's great thank you very much indeed thanks michael good and then lastly um, we have uh, Fareshta, who would like to ask a question. So I'll unmute you now, Fareshta. Apologies if that's not how you pronounce your name. Um, Hi, can you hear me? We can. You certainly can. Quiet, yes, but, but we can. Morning. Morning. And, um, I have two questions. One is about uh, Jason. And the other is about the uh, J dictate. For instance, I have a very big accent. Um, when I am using, uh, for instance, Siri or, or uh, Google in my phone, it doesn't, it doesn't actually, you know, sometimes I got problem, but what about um, sorry, I don't what, understand. Sorry. What about um, this uh, J say and J dictate? And my other question is, do those programs support any other languages? Okay, two great questions. Let me deal with the first one first, because <laughs> uh, it needs a bit of a longer explanation. <laughs> you know, when um, Google and Apple started developing these voice recognition systems, um, it was great because it brought voice recognition to the masses. Okay, so uh, a lot of people were able to take advantage of it. The problem with it is that it is all processed using the cloud, using the internet. Okay, so what that has the, the, there's a disadvantage there in that the voice recognition isn't particularly good so even uh, i think i have quite a clear voice sometimes if i speak to one of these devices it doesn't understand completely what i say now the advantage of using a product like dragon is that the processing 
is all done on the computer itself. Okay, and it has a very large uh, library, a very large vocabulary, and it can understand, uh, it's more forgiving in terms of the accent that a person has. Now, voice recognition isn't perfect, and a lot of this is about training the system so that if it makes a mistake, and we all have terminology that's special to us, whether it be street names or people's names and so on, sometimes you have to correct it, and there are ways of doing that, but it learns from its mistakes. Okay, so the more you train it, the more you correct things, the greater the level of recognition will be. So it's important to put in that time and effort as well. But I actually think that um, it would be okay with what I'm hearing with your voice, uh, particularly if you spoke at the speed that you were just doing there um, to start with. And I'm afraid I've forgotten the second question. Would you like to reiterate your second question? Sorry, what did you ask? Me what was again? the second Sorry. the second question? What was that, please? Not sure if you can hear us, Freshton. I'm not sure. I've I've answered your first question, madam. Um, if I'm waiting for the second one now. Sorry, my my internet. Uh, it doesn't sound as if it's particularly strong. There's a bit of a problem there. If we just try once more to ask the second question. Sorry, I uh, okay. It's not coming through. Yeah. Am no. I unmuted? Um, any, any other language? Yes, you are, yeah. Stuart. Yeah, it was yeah, any other language. Yeah, um, someone's just put it in the chat box. Okay. That's very kind of that person to do that. Thank you very much. Um, the answer is um, we have one other language, okay? We've just finished a German version of it. And th we did that in partnership with a company in Germany, of course, because I believe that it, when you translate a product, it isn't just about translating the work that you've done. You need a completely cohesive approach, I think, if you're going to do a product of this magnitude. So we, um, we would want... The, um, the individual language to be properly supported. So the documentation, all the hundreds of pages of documentation that we have, they should be translated. Uh, a person should be able to ring up or, or call or send an email in that chosen language and to be able to get a response in that language. So that is why the, um, the languages are few and far between at the moment um, because we need people who are going to invest the time and put in the effort to make sure that we can give people that really cohesive approach. So German is the only one at this moment. Great. Thank you. If Fereshta is still with us, I hope that answers your questions. Um, Thank you, Brian and Peter, for helping us with that. And um, Amy, um, again, has asked uh, another question, um, which I'm just having a look at here. So she's asked, if, if you can't use the headset, so I assume she means the headset that you provide, yeah. Brian, if, if you're unable to use that because, um, because you already use a particular type of inner ear headphone due to a a hearing impairment, um, can you use a separate microphone system and carry on using your particular headphones? Yes, it would depend upon the kind of microphone that you were going to use. A lot of people think they can use the built-in microphone of their laptop, which is very unsatisfactory because they tend to be of an extremely poor quality. And remember that if you're going to use a microphone like that, um, it is in danger of capturing a lot of extraneous noise as well. So you'd need to very carefully manage it. Would it need to be in a very quiet room or you'd need to have a, an excellent microphone in order to deal with it? Uh, theoretically, yes, it can be done. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Yep, hope that 
helps Amy um, and I believe that's it Brian we just we've got another comment from Andrew who has just said uh, yeah he wants to say how well um, you've presented today and it's been a real pleasure that's from Andrew from Galloway's uh, thank you very much indeed thanks Andrew as always for joining us um, and I think Brian, that's 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 uh, that's all the questions that we've got. So um... well, that's that's wonderful. Um, again, anyone can, can follow up uh, if necessary. But again, uh, thank you, Sam, for giving me the opportunity, and um, look forward maybe to presenting to you again sometime. Definitely, definitely. No, thank you, Brian. It's been a. It really has been a pleasure. It's uh, it's quite a yeah quite. A, uh, uh, we're very lucky, very privileged to have, have you with us uh, today to present, and uh, I'm sure everyone will join me in uh, in thanking you for that brilliant presentation. Um, so yes, that that's uh, that's all we've got time for. Then uh, everyone, thank you again for another really uh, successful um, social hub uh, event. Um, I will be in touch, as I said, after the session um, with with some follow up details um, and also some contact information for, for Brian. Um, again, please do get in touch with either myself, with Stuart, um, or with, with Brian um, if you want to discuss um, what, what's been uh, demonstrated and presented today. Or also, you know, if you have any other questions or queries about any other areas of assistive technology, then of course we're available. Um, please do use, um, use us. Um, Great, lots of thanks coming in from everybody, uh, from Patsy, from Peter, from Edward um, Bates, another regular attendee. Thanks, Edward and Chris. Um, Stuart, do you, would you like to add anything before we sign off? Um, just as always, just to say thanks to everyone for attending, but in particular to Brian for giving us his time this morning. Absolutely fascinating, um, Brian. I knew about these products, but to actually hear a live demonstration just brings it home as to how good and how how you know revolutionary these products are. So, thank you very much indeed, and I might be in touch regarding them myself. Uh, and just finally, just very quickly, um, just to let people know who are still here, Sam and I will be discussing um, future webinars. Uh, we're hoping to keep them going um, at least throughout July, I think I'm right in saying, Sam. So um, watch this space and we'll be in touch with details when we have um, future webinars planned. So thanks again. Definitely. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Stuart. And thanks for mentioning that as well. Um, yes. And also, please do send us your suggestions for future sessions. I actually can't take the credit for uh, for, for getting uh, Brian along. Um, this actually came from a, from a, an earlier session. Um, I think it might have been Andrew actually from Galloway who suggested we explore um, Jaws and Dragon and JC, and um, hence um, why well, we invited Brian along. So please do send us your suggestions. If there's any any um, yeah any particular pieces of software or or hardware that you like. Um, to, to see demonstrated or discussed, then please do um, let us know and we'll add that to our list of future sessions. Great. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll leave you with the final word, Brian, if you want to sign off. No, um, I think I've said everything that I wanted to. Uh, thank you very much once again. Great. Thanks, Brian. And thanks everybody again for joining us. We'll see you in a couple of weeks time. Thank you.